Hey Virgo Seeker, so happy to have you here back or for the first time um, to the Existential Shift with me, Morgane. October Monthly Taroscope for Virgo Sun, Moon, Rising, or Venus. October is unique. I have something special that I'm doing for the first time, a live Q&A on October 10th. Uh, the exact hour I will pin to the comments and all the videos once I know, probably around the 8th or the 9th. Um, so you'll get to talk to me and ask me questions. Yay, and I'll get to meet you, get to know you guys. Um, and I'm doing special um, personal readings. Uh, all the information is below in the information box. How, much, where, when, why, and so on. Um, yeah, thank you for your subscriptions, likes, comments. I read everything. I appreciate all of it. Uh, to, to subscribe is a great way to support me if you resonate with my videos and you want to see more of them. So press that button and okay, let's get to it. Too many cards, Virgo. You want to talk, but you want to do it accurately because they all fell like in one bunch. They didn't spread around. Organized. I love you guys so much, Virgo. Like, I can't even... Okay, Virgo for October. This is the steampunk tarot, by the way. There we go. So, hmm, I like this star. Interesting. Okay, Seven of Cups, the Star, and the King of Cups. All right. Some of us are um, a little bit lost in the world of fantasy and dreams and, you know, in our emotional realm um, that we idealize and think, where do I want to be? What do I want to do? How do I want to do it? Uh, we have a lot of inspiring ideas that are derived from our emotional realm. I'm saying it because of the King of Cups. And our emotional realm naturally derives from our spiritual realm, from realm from our energetic realm as above so below as within so without um and vice versa so our soul is talking to us through our heart giving us inspiration but it feels a little bit um really in the emotional and spiritual and energetic realm not as much in the um tangible practical realm of our life let's see what it brings with and the seven is strong because seven of cups then the star is 17 it's one seven the king of cups it's cancer it's july so that's seven so i have seven one seven um uh, seven again very spiritual very artistic very um very inner seven is a very inner number um, of divine inspiration that comes to affect either in creativity or even in the science numbers um, physics, chemistry, alchemy. Seven is the divine that expresses itself in the numbers, okay? Um, this is something that I will delve more into in the extended, because if you're new in the extended, what I do is I take the numerological aspect of the cards I have on the table and the energetic and the elemental one, and I rearrange the same cards on the table and give new added interpretation and speak about the numbers and the energy and that's just the first part of the extended um but we'll talk i'll show it to you towards the end you'll see your extended and i'll explain what else is going to be there um, but let's get let's keep on with our reading now um yeah there's you know the heart is pumping right now virgo and going into the beginning of um october there is also potentially someone in our life that is really inspiring us that makes us want to write poems or paint paintings or um, someone that really brings out the fantasy um, creative aspect of our lives also maybe our dreamy aspect of our life um, we're really drawn into it um, a lot of There's a lot of idealism, a lot of promises, but let's see, let's see if it's tangible. Let's see what happens with it, okay? Let's keep going for Virgos, because Virgos, as much as gentle and healing that you are, 
You also need structure and organ and order in your life uh, because you like the earth, you like the tangible, you like to know that something can manifest in reality. Um, you're the herbalist, you like to cure people with you know, something that is alternative and not necessarily just the Western medicine, but it also has to be tangible. Plants, herbs, spices, something that you can actually see results and, and measure it. Um, you love the combination of, you know, the spiritual and the scientific, the um, ethereal and the, and, and, and the physical. Um, okay, so we definitely have the ethereal here. Oh, wow. The strength card. Okay. So even though the strength card is also very spiritual, it's a major arcana, it's the high advisor. It's very very uh, inner type of strength that com comes from the spirit. It is very much what I just said, connected to nature. It is connected to the elements. Um, it is the white magic that works with nature and with the divine, the, 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 the collective spirit and with... Um, the the evolution and the expansion of humanity that is meant to happen it's like it's someone that works their way with you know synchronized with the energies and with the universe as opposed to trying to control the energies and manipulate it manipulate reality into something else that they want to see in their life that isn't necessarily aligned with the with the with the collective right um so the strength is very much aligned with the collective so there is a lot of inspiration here um intuition divine guidance that is now tapped into the realm of the heart it started for some of us i don't know if it's been a while maybe around seven months or just in the past seven weeks or seven days or something like that it's it's been a little bit disoriented um you felt a lot of things but you didn't really know maybe how to kind of grab it in in a tangible way but now things are starting especially since uh, in the past couple of months, since July, potentially, because I have the King of Cups here, um, from July, August, things started to really take a much more clear direction. Okay, where do I want to take this energy and this inspiration towards? Where do I want to put this effort in? Um, the Strength card, especially with the Star, uh, shows that you have that you're really connected to your intuition. Um, that you're really in tune with your um, guides and angels and what they're talking to you and with your higher self, with your own se with your own self. Um, and you, you can trust yourself. You can trust your intuition. Oh, interesting. And then we have the Empress in the reverse. Okay. So when we really follow our path, our inspiration, um, our vision, sometimes it doesn't necessarily align with people around us. The Empress is very much, she's the caregiver, she's the, the great mother, she is very family oriented, she's very there for her family, friends, um, society, um, she's very nurturing, very healing, very caring, and I feel like when she's coming here in reverse, it's kind of guiding us, especially when I connect it with the other cards, follow the self, self-care. Tend to yourself, to your own higher, um, to your own higher self, to your own soul and spirit. Too many cards. Um, try not to drown in the need. Well, you're a Virgo, of course, and especially if I have the Empress on, on, the, on the table, to not um, drown in the need to care and tend for others, especially if it comes at the expense of what you know you have to do for yourself. Okay, if there's something you know you have to do for yourself, a certain path you're supposed to take, a certain uh, way of thinking, just do it. Um, and don't let, you know, sorry, I was just fixing the line. And don't let guilt or um, feeling obligated to other people kind of hold you back. Of course, I'm not telling you to abandon your kids. <laughs> All right, you have to have some boundaries, but. Find a way to set boundaries between you and people in your life that have expectations of you, that wants to care for you. Also, some of you are tending for someone um, maternal in your life. Maybe you need, you have the need to care for a mother because the mother is very strong here. Cancer, King of Cups, is even though it's a male figure in this in most decks, it's it's the mother element. 
Okay, and the Empress is very the mother element, and she's in the reverse. And here's there's the the connection to the house, connection to the home, connection connection to the childhood. Again, the Cancer element, um, and in between I have this, you know, she's she's caring, she's tending for this line for his injury. So some of you are care, are tending for someone, um, and you feel like it might you, you're trying to find the balance between tending for them. And tending for yourself and your own dreams and your own hopes and your own journey because you really know what you want to do but maybe you can't necessarily do it right now because of the maternal aspect either the caregiving or someone needs to care for you hmm. okay ten of swords in the reverse i'm sorry not in the reverse why did i say that interesting ten of swords Okay, if some of you have experienced a loss of a family member or someone really close to you um, that had a major effect on you recently, you're now healing from it and you're trying to find your connection to source in order to, um, you know, find grasp in reality and come back to reality and kind of not be there. Some of you are trying to connect with that person, um, you know, trying to, to, to talk to their spirit. Um, Ten of Swords says, I mean, obviously, if that's the case, and of course, it's not going to resonate with anybody, but if you're at a place that you're feeling that you've you've experienced loss or are experiencing some sort of loss, um, in the mundane world, you have to keep going. You have to get up, dress up, show up to life because there's a lot of life still in you, Virgo, a lot of inspiration, a lot of dreams to manifest, to create, to do. Um, if you're a creative person, you're encouraged to do so and help yourself heal through your art. Um, take your art, heal your broken heart. Uh, Meryl Strip quoted someone who said that. I don't remember who she was quoting. Three of Cups. Okay. The Empress in the Reverse and the Three of Cups. Hmm. This is for really some of you, not for all of you. If you're in a good, trusting relationship and this doesn't resonate with you, do not think that I'm talking to you. What I'm saying now is very specific. Some of you, few of you, um, either fell in love with someone outside your partnership or your marriage um, and you are feeling guilty or you're afraid to break down the family structure um, or your partner you, you know or you feel that is has fallen in love with someone else I don't see a um, rotten low vibration type of cheating I see manners of the heart that are uncontrolled like someone genuinely falling in love with someone and if it's you you can't feel guilty it's 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 nature you can't some love is not something you can control and if someone if and if it's happening to your partner and you you are hurt by it i'm so sorry you're going through it but know that this individual didn't have bad intentions um it was just nature calling in a way um but now if if it's in the past what i'm describing there's a sense of you know you need to heal from it and move on from it um, some of you just really want to break through the mechanism, the the core of how you're living, and just have fun. You're like, I don't want all this drama, all this suffering, all this pain, all this caring for others, um, whatever it is that is going on. And I just want to go out, have fun, not think, not care, not worry. Um, which is legitimate, Virgo. You need to be easier on yourself, okay? Eight of Swords, yeah, you're 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 self shaming. You need to be easier on yourself, okay? I mean, you can't judge yourself for your heart. I I, I don't remember in which video that I posted in the past couple of days I said that, but I said it in another video. I think it was in one of the uh, air signs, perhaps. Not sure. Um, when we fall in love, 
our soul is basically guiding us to our next evolution, to our next step in our journey on either a karmic connection, something to learn from, or an expansion of, of ourselves. And okay, now we've grown, now we need to readapt and have the new person, uh, have someone else in our life that matches our new vibration or our new frequent, our new frequency. Um, or just, we need to move on to the next step stage. Okay. Um, you can't be mad at yourself or at someone for following their heart. Like if the heart calls, it's your soul calling. Okay. So feeling bad about yourself or feeling guilty about it, it's just not natural. It's like a plant being angry at itself or growing taller than a different plant. Not that the other plant is bad, but you know, a tree is a tree. It's meant to grow tall and a bush is a bush. It, it's meant to grow uh, short and wide. Okay. So imagine a tree just being itself growing and growing and it has this friend bush next to it and it's shorter than it and shorter, but then it's the same height, but then suddenly it's tall and, and it's feeling guilty. No, I want to stay lower. I don't want to make the, I don't. I want to make them feel short. They're not bad short. They're just, that's their nature and that's your nature. It's just different. The bush is important and beautiful and lovely in its own structure. And you are beautiful and important and lovely in your own structure. And if it, and if it was a similar structure for a while and it, it was on the same level, great, you hung out. But if nature changed and you have evolved or grown or expanded elsewhere set of me you know yeah someone has a lot of fantasies and a lot of emotions and they're feeling a bit uncomfortable with it and there's but the soul is encouraging <laughs> okay interesting all right let's see Ooh. Six of swords, four of swords, but they dropped in like in the edges of in, in, in two separate edges of the table, one on each side. And then the devil fell like this and it was hiding the four of wands. Okay, so I already have two fours on the tables on a table and a repetition of seven we already have our extended being built up and two sixes actually because the devil is 15 which making it six and six of swords the six um and two eights strength and eight of swords and the star is also eight. okay we have an interesting uh first part of the extended that's good sorry so i want to let's look at this let's look at this Hmm. Okay. One narrative that is coming up, that is only one, I have another one. So be patient if it doesn't speak to you. Um, if you're in that narrative of being a part of a family um, or a structure and then one, you know, their heart is beating elsewhere. Um, and then either you or the other person, you feel like they're not handling it properly. They're being immature and selfish and self-destructive potentially. Um, and you don't know if you can trust them as, let's say you have children, right? And you don't know how to handle uh, the situation with the kids and how it will affect the kids. And you feel like you're scared that what happened will have them behave in a really not positive manner, especially next to the kids. The only thing I have to say is time and distance will really help the situation. Taking a break and recess and, and distance kind of detach will really help the situation and help this person heal and maybe grow more mature and be able to handle it better um, very few of you again here and this is probably something that has happened 
already so you would know right i'm not predicting anything for you so don't freak out you would know if this is yours if some of you had a like an an affair an outer marriage or out of partnership affair or something and now it's you don't know what to do if you have kids in the situation or, or if you're married four of wands here is the card of marriage and engagement but specifically in this deck you have children um so i feel like someone is just might be um one parent might be going into a dysfunctional place where they don't know how to handle the situation so you have to kind of take responsibility it's temporary okay it is what it is um, we're free to make our choices we're not free of the consequences and there's just certain amount of guilt we can impose on ourselves okay it is what it is now let's make the best out of it right so that's one thing a whole other thing is some of us are in real need of a vacation okay of just stepping out of reality having fun and not overthink about what is the right thing to do and kind of take a break from responsibilities i feel like some of us have been so responsible for others and responsible for others and caregiving and, and there so you're just like i'm done i just want to go completely the other way and just care only for myself and not for others at all and just take a break and maybe october is the time to do that um, or maybe you are about to do that i don't even know if it's an advice or a, a prediction but it seems to be leading there and I have six four six four so i feel like it's something necessary for your sense of stability within yourself and harmony within yourself you just need to take care of yourself even if it's perceived selfish um it's temporary so i'm giving you the go <laughs> A lot of harsh swords here. Eight of swords, four of swords, ten of swords. Yeah, some of you just need a mental break. Like, you want to connect to your heart and you want to connect to your love and you want to connect to your hope and to your dreams and to your vision. You want to know how you feel. And some of you are just so surrounded with so much uh, relationship issues or family issues that you don't necessarily know what it is that you want or feel and you really want to take that break right please comment tell me how it resonates with you guys and if this does, doesn't re doesn't resonate at all in the extended i give tons of other narratives because other than what i express what i explain with the uh, numerological and elemental aspect like the new type of reading from the same cards i then clean the table do a new shuffle and give you a celtic cross reading which is completely different narrative, potentially, depending on the cards, right? And I also give a message from the runes at the end. Just so you know. <laughs> okay. Let's keep looking into this. Virgo. Seven of Wands. Yeah, another seven. You just don't want to handle some BS. You're just like, oh, can't handle this bs i want out of this bullshit excuse my language you're taking control over things you're owning up to how and what you want and you're just telling everybody to go f themselves excuse my language you need that time and space uh and meant for mental clarity um and to take care of your business seriously Too many cards, though the magician. If it will want to come out, it will come out. Those were too many cards, though. Okay. <laughs> Queen of Cups. Could be a Scorpio, a water sign. Queen of Cups and King of Cups in the house. Okay. So if you resonate with the narrative of someone fell in love and then a whole drama happened in the personal life because of that they're still in your life they're still in your life they're still around um and there's still a connection a strong connection and i feel like if not in october then definitely towards november there will be much more clarity when it comes to your connection 
because this because this is the Scorpio card, November. The Emperor, yeah. Much more uh, grounded energy, much more stable energy. Um, you will be back in your earth element and in your heart element, in your water element, really kind of setting, you know, and oh, the empress in reverse, even though, but still the empress with the emperor. So I have a lot of uh, divine feminine, divine masculine here on the table. So there's definitely union. You need, okay, the female aspect of the union needs to figure things out, needs to kind of clear their mind, um, take care of their business, um, find balance between what they want and what they can do with reality, you know. And that will allow new, more um, grounded communication with the other person, with a counterpart, the potential counterpart. And he's very present, or she's very present. This is this is a very masculine energy. So this individual is very present in this reading. Ace of Wands. Yes. Okay. A new start. A brand new start. Everything that you've felt and envisioned, and then the consequences and the soap opera. Um, you're gonna take care of all that throughout October, and I feel like November brings. Like end of October, November brings a really, really positive new start. Also, I have the Venus retrograding in Scorpio. No, this is Venus, right? She's in the reverse, retrograding in Scorpio. So I feel like this is a very intense time um, to just figure out the heart, figure out the realm of your fantasies, visions, emotions, wants, dreams. And really kind of find, let it let things sink finding balance and then once venus is done retrograding in scorpio more towards the fire season the sag season because this is fire also so maybe towards mid-november end of november there's a really 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 strong new beginning already in november there is a calm there's a real going towards it you know and then in december i'm really end of november december mid-November towards December, so a brand new start. And this is something that is um, that you have in common with a lot, of, a lot of Zodiac, a lot of signs. It's something that has been coming up in the readings, this timing that I'm talking about. Now, these are general readings, so obviously uh, it won't apply to everybody, and some of you have different time frames and, and, um, and divine timings, right? But I feel like it's part of just the planetary aspect and what the stars are doing in our life right now. So... October, November, we're really going back to everything, to all the drama from the past few months. Setting the tone, you know? Bringing balance back, restoring balance. And then we're open to have a really passionate new... This is a very passionate uh, connection, a new start with someone. This can also be a new work, a new job that you're really, really excited about and you're feeling really... have intense feelings for, something that you connect with deeply um, and that you have uh, somewhat of a leadership in that aspect. So the next two, three months are looking really good. Okay, I think I want to, yeah, this is good. Let's look at your extended. And by the way, once we, I'll show you your extended, then in this right now, I will give you messages from the Akashic Tarot, aka the Akashic, Akashic Records. Um, brilliant, 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 brilliant. I am in love with this Oracle. Like it's just, just started working with them and I'm going to go, and I'm going to delve deeper into Akashic Records world and I'm excited. Okay. So there's a few things going on here. Let's do six and six. I won't keep everything on the table. Only things that feel relevant. Seven, seven. Obviously, the king and the queen, the emperor and the empress. Only one ten, only one ace, only one three. Let's bring this back. Mm, two eights right here. And then I'll take the major arcanas and see what happens there. So, excuse me. 
The reason I'm putting the two sevens here with these guys, um, so this is Queen of Cups, King of Cup, Cups, the obvious. King of Cups is also Cancer, aka July, so I take it as a seven. The star is 17, so it's one seven. So I have seven, seven, one, seven, seven, and then it's counterpart. After that, I'll take this star and put it in with all the eights and talk about this. Two fours and two sixes. I'll connect all these here because the emperor is four, so four, four, four. And I'm going to leave this because it's a major kind of. Okay, I'm sorry. This is the part where I talk to myself, but you're seeing this, right? You're getting the picture. You're getting the picture. Mm. Okay. Great. This is your extended. I'm thinking because it's three and the Empress is three, three, four, four, four. Yeah, I'm going to keep it. Okay. Sorry, guys. All right. By the way, if you want to learn tarot from me, there's Tarot Masterclass. I teach tarot. Uh, it's also on my Vimeo. So link below in the information box. Uh, in the information box, you'll also find the link for the extended that I just showed you. Um, this is just the first part of the extended. After that, there's a Celtic cross and then messages from the rooms, right? So links to that as well. Um, what else? There's the information about private readings. If you want a private reading, I have special prices for October. Everything in the magical information box below. <laughs> um, oh, and the Q&A on October 10th. Okay, cool. Message for... Virgo... Amazing Virgos for the month of October. Your spirit, Akashic Records, please show me clear divine guidance for Virgo Sun, Moon, Rising. Speaking of, watch your other placements in case you didn't resonate or you want added value to the story. Um, I also recommend going back to the readings from the past month, from September, because that's how we actually learn, you know, from... Oh, that's how we actually learn from what was and how we can do better for the future. Um, after experiencing experiencing the energies of this month, going back to the advice and to the pre premonitions, we make the connections and we learn a lot from it. Okay. Virgo for October. Virgo for October. When it comes, it comes, Virgo. I'm doing it right. Virgo for October. Is there anything else I need to say during this time? I think I said everything. Yep. <laughs> Here's my confirmation. Ooh, interesting. I'm learning them as we go. Hilarion. Maybe I'm you know, pronouncing it wrong, wrong but Hilarion. You can look, see? There's a few characters here. Some of them are kind of ghostly looking. Okay, let's read. Story time. Hilarion. Seen here with spirit and the implements of study and scientific discovery, Hilarion is a powerful ascended master and a wonderful connection to the fund of information that the Akashic records hold. He is the master of research, science, truth, healing, logical mind, concrete knowledge, and spirit communication. So if you've been thinking about pursuing an endeavor in these areas, now is the time to start. Like the angels and other masters, Hilarion is always available to you and receiving this card upright is telling you that his assistance is close at hand. If you are working on a project that requires research, a strong academic approach, and attention to detail, 
it is it's full steam ahead. It's time to open to this master's energy. If you have a job that involves any type of evidence detection and drawing conclusions from the discover from that discovery, these types of jobs include scientific research, mediumship, forensic activity, the law, medical testing, and more. These and similar activities should be on the rise for you now. This is the time to bring a logical approach to all your pursuits. Hilarion is right there with you, blessing you with help, clarity, and direction. I love it. Okay, guys, see you in a second. The extended happy Halloween. I might be doing some dress up, uh, dressing up for the um, uh, November readings at the end of October. We'll see. I don't know. Um, I'll see you on October 10th in our live Q and Q and A. Love you guys very much. Ciao for now.